This is Mazzy here, and this is probably the last thread I'll ever do this year. Threads are everywhere, and this is a comp thread, a thread on the vinyl community. Comps, your favorite comps, a list of comps, list of 20 questions where we showcase comps we like or comps we have that fit the question, that answer the question. This was created uh, by a fellow in Texas, uh, Nick Rudo, there'll be a link below so you can see his original request for this yet another comp. There's been folk comps and prog comps and jazz comps and short comps and long comps and soul comps. And until we have our 2022 comp, I'm over this crap. But it's fun. They're fun to do. And uh, hopefully they showcase all our collections. And I do recommend if you haven't um, got into the whole vinyl community YouTube thing, and if you're considering it, doing a thread like this is a great way to dive into. So I'll go through them as efficiently as I can. Show a comp that introduced you to a genre. And I think, even though I knew some of this music before, but one of my all-time favorite comps, and it's been a <laughs> a, a wonderful journey that it's still happening, is um, Analog Africa's African Scream Contest. I actually got turned on to this from watching, and I don't remember the artist who did it, but if you've seen What's in My Bag, the Amoeba record series, what I love about those are I like watching bands and artists I have no idea who they are, or even artists that I don't really care for the music to see what they personally buy or into. And someone uh, bought this album, this was several years ago now, three years ago maybe, or whenever, very soon after it came out, and they played a clip of it. Analog Africa is a label uh, curated out of Germany, and a lot of them have these beautiful books inside curating it um, and they go in uh, obviously African and South American uh, artists and bands and sometimes it's a comp of various artists that are uh, thematically and um, musically connected sometimes it's one artist and he scours everywhere for these recordings and the curation of these is just fantastic I have about 30 to 35 African um Analog Africa Records. I order them every once in a while from Germany, so I get them straight from Germany. They do occasionally appear locally, but I pay a little more and I get them shipped to FedEx and I get them in a week. But it's worth the investment for me because I think this is one of the great reissue and labels out there of records that I ne would never hear otherwise. So uh, this got me into the whole uh, African uh, music. A lot, this is very psychedelic, soulful uh, African music. In this case, uh, from Benin and Togo, Afro sounds from the 1970s. Uh, really amazing record. Both volumes, but they're hard to get now. But he does occasionally go in print again. So go to Bandcamp. That's where uh, you can get a lot of these things. At least get on their list. So when they do a repress, uh, you can grab them right away. Okay. Show a garage rock or psych comp. Well, it's sort of like that. This is from the, um, I believe, the late 70s into the 80s. And this is a Titan. It's all pop. This is a tiny label that lasted, what, just four years of two guys that were influenced to do a, a, a zine based on, like, uh, Greg Shaw's um, Bomp, <laughs> who put the Bomp, which was sort of a garage band, punky, new wavy zine in the 70s. And if you don't know uh, who put the Bomp and Greg Shaw, you need to research uh, his, his uh, collections and his label and his uh, fanzines. But uh, this is out of the Kansas City area, and they put out these series, not a lot of records, but of, of music from the Kansas City Midwestern area that is almost like power pop. And these collections, uh, this is a numero group. I could have put this in the numero group question, which is coming up a little later. Fantastic label to do these unusual collections of bands most of us, at least myself, have never heard of unless you are in the region. Um, a lot of interesting gems, 
on here. Uh, I, I recommend this stuff if you're into it. Of course, well-curated book of the history of the label, history of these recordings. Obviously, uh, these aren't sonic masterpieces, but that's not the point of the record. But wonderful uh, collection. It's all pop. Titan, it's all pop. And this, you know, I'm going to show this now. There's a question later, your favorite album cover. I would put this in there. I'm going to show something different just to show something completely different. But what a beautiful black and white photograph. I would. This is something I would like a print of this, a fiber-based photo, 11 by 14, 16 by 20 framed. I think this is a gorgeous uh, photograph. Lovely box. Numero Group, incredible label. This is Numero Group uh, number 24. All right, uh, next. Show a lost leader, a Warner Brothers comp. Uh, okay. Lost leaders. Do you know what lost leaders are? You know, at a certain age, we know. Back in the late 60s, early, mostly around 1970, 71, it, they probably appeared. In all the Warner Brothers records, we'd see this. And we'd see this. I ordered every single one. These were double albums for the most part. A dollar an album. So for $2, you'd get this Lost Leader Warner Comp. Amazing hysterical liner notes. Uh, and that's another story sometime about the gentleman who wrote all these liner notes. Um, but they were comps of Warner and Warner related, you know, Warner reprise, uh, bizarre records. I believe these are amongst the two first, and I'm just going to show three here. This is the 1969 Warner Reprise Record Show. And this is Songbook 19. So these are both 1969. There you go. I think that was the first year. What's great about them, they have these little intros and little mini uh, bios on each record. For instance, this one has Neil Young and Crazy Horse Cinnamon Girl, obviously from his first, um, actually his second uh, solo record, right? It also has um, the Grateful Dead doing that rag, a bridge version, Jeff and Maria Muldar, the Everly Brothers, Doug Gershaw, Arlo Guthrie, uh, so on and so forth. But you get unusual artists. You get like Van Dyke Parks and Randy Newman, who none of us knew about at the time. You get, um, you get Pentangle from their first album, Peter Paul and Mary, John Renborn, Bert Janch. Ella Fitzgerald, when her uh, Warner Brothers stuff, Hamilton Camp. Hamilton Camp was a folk singer and actor. Uh, to those of us in the know, Hamilton Camp wrote Pride of Man, which is the opening track on the, uh, which is a folk song, opening track on the very first Quicksilver Messenger Service. They covered that song. Theodore Bikel, Fats Domino, Jimi Hendrix, what's on here? Occasionally, though, the Fugs, Frank Zappa, the Kinks, occasionally there were alternate versions and mixes. So uh, people who collect everything, those of you crazy people that collect every single version, are it's well worth getting these kinds of records. And the third one, I have literally, how many of these, 20 of them, 25? I do have a whole, maybe I'll link it down below. I did do a showcase on all these records. So there'll be a link below to see an old video a couple years ago I did on Lost Leaders. The, the label, the releases. Look at this hot platter. What a great selection. This has Deep Purple, Strange Kind of Woman, John Baldry, Red Eye, T-Rex, Randy Newman, Jackie Lomax, Norman Greenbaum, Gordon Lightfoot, Ron Nagel, Ron Nagel, uh, Fanny, The Kinks, John D. Laudermilk. So you have Mother Earth. You have artists we know now and artists long gone, maybe only uh, are more under, bubbling under that just uh, freaks, freaks would know about. Is that not politically correct? <laughs> Warner Brothers, we love you. Okay, next, um, show a numeral comp. Numeral group was that first, the Titans uh, box I wrote, but this is a fantastic one. And this is Warefaring Stranger Cosmic American Music. What a beautiful cover, Neon uh, Cosmic Cowboy. Numeral number 58. Uh, this is in a way kind of left off from um, 
indie records, but even a lot of records that kind of bubbled under that were on albums and, and 45s that never really got through the whole country cosmic cowboy rock thing at Graham Parsons and the Birds and Bo Brummels were doing. These are the groups that most of us uh, never heard of, that, that never got into, that never learned about. Again, Numero uh, Group has these nice little overviews. In this case, the albums of Gunfighters. This is a little booklet that talks about all the albums that are represented here, all the artists. So it's Cosmic Cowboy uh, Rock from around 1970, 71-ish on the Numero Group. Wayfaring Strangers, Cosmic American Music. Okay, show a light in the attic comp. Light in the attic is another great uh, comp label and reissue label happen, uh, out of Seattle here where I'm uh, recording this. And this is a recent one. This is great. This is a, like a best of uh, Nancy Sinatra. Highly recommended. They're going to be reissuing some of her records and some will say, why? You can get them in the dollar bins, but they're usually chewed up and everything. I, they started out with this comp. They did a limited edition CD booklet, which has amazing photographs in it. But start walking. Now, if nothing else, look at this cover. This cover, this back photograph, and that. Of course, this has all the hits and uh, the collaborations, like Some Velvet Morning with Lee Hazelwood. And of course, this edition, I don't know how hard this is to get, it seems to not be everywhere. It's a beautiful orange. I'm not usually a big on the whole colored vinyl thing, but um, it's it's really lovely. And of course, this this book. Lee Hazelwood. I mean, those two, one of the great duets of the 1960s. He wrote Boots Are Made for Walking Lee Hazelwood. So that's Light in the Attic. Okay, show a jazz comp. This is a series that I got promos of. I got most of these back in my uh, record day, promo days. And these were put out, let's see, what years did these come out? Probably late 70s, 86, I think. Or sorry, maybe this is 86, this is later. So I got these from a friend at Warner Brothers Atlantic Records. And there's a whole series thematically, like bebop and 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 piano jazz, and this is the avant-garde, the Atlantic jazz. So there are selections from Atlantic jazz series. Uh, this one is the, uh, obviously, as you can read, and I can read too, because I'm looking at this through a lens. Ross on Roland Kirk, Charles Mingus, Ornette Coleman, John Coltrane and Don Cherry, Roland Kirk again in the Art Ensemble of Chicago. Single disc, but a nice little overview of this. In this particular one I pulled, I think I have eight of these, seven or eight of these, and this is the avant-garde. So this is my jazz comp. Uh, I'm sticking with jazz for the next question. Show a live music comp. I'm a big fan of this series. These came out from 1986 to 19, excuse me, 1976 to 1982 about. And these are, put, these are Verve reissues put out by Polygram Records, Polydor Records. Most of them are double uh, collections. And most are uh, by one artist. There's uh, Ella Fitzgerald, there's Lester Young. Uh, it's a lot of the uh, Verve stuff from 40s, 50s, into the 60s, and some into the 70s. Uh, beautiful illustrated covers. And this one is Jazz at the Philharmonic, Norman Granz. Norman Granz, who started Verve Records later, uh, he would start in the 70s Pablo records, but he produced a series of shows at the uh, Philharmonic in New York, Jazz at the Philharmonic. And these are uh, recordings from 1941 with Nat King Cole, Illinois Jaquette, Les Paul, J.J. Johnson, and they played in Billie Holiday's legendary um, Jazz at the Philharmonic recital. There's a series of shows Norma Grant's put on uh, titled Jazz at the Philharmonic. And these are really uh, incredible sets. As you can see, there's a whole series of these illustrations. Some of these, not all of them, I'd say, I'm not sure if this one is, but some of these are mastered by Robert Ludwig, even though they're old recordings. Uh, I highly recommend this series. You usually can get them pretty cheap and they're, um, they sound amazing, but they're not audiophile like 
if you're expecting the Tone Poet kind of series of those recordings from the 50s and 60s, it's not what these are about. It's about the fucking music, so get with that. <laughs> uh, jazz comp, or jazz live, jazz live. Okay, show a comp on colored vinyl. Um, I'm showing Kraftwerk The Mix. The Mix is a collection sort of pulled together of different mixes of their songs. It's the last of the reissue series, I believe, that came out. Obviously, German electronic, a little crowd rock, but mostly in the electronic uh, uh, whole series. Uh, this is a double record. And I guess, okay, someone's going to tell me that it's not in color, but it's white. So white is all the pigments taken out. No color left, so I'm showing it anyway, because it's not black vinyl, it's white vinyl. And what's great about this whole series of reissues that came out in the last couple of years, they have these great books of the work of craft work and the artistic side of craft work. So colored vinyl, craft work, the robotic Germans, electronica, craft work, colored vinyl. White vinyl, white vinyl. Show a holiday comp. Amongst my favorite is this R&B. This is Rhythm and Blues, Christmas. Um, one of the best songs ever is Merry Christmas Baby by uh, Charles Brown. Just a soothing, sexy voice and uh, the piano on that song is, is wonderful. Silent Night by Baby Washington. Uh, Clyde McFadder and the Drifters doing White Christmas. The Five Keys, Chuck Berry, Rut, Run, Rudolph, Run. The Oreos, B.B. King. Lowell, Fulson, Marvin, and Johnny. Uh, one of my favorite Christmas albums I pull out every year. Holiday album. Show a world music comp. I'm showing two. There's going to be a third volume coming out very soon. This is a Wamono A to Z volume one and two. Japanese jazz, funk, and rare groove. This one's from 1968 to 1980. This is 1970 to 1977. These would be um, another uh, in another possibility for my favorite covers. I love the artwork on these records. Just, just, just beautiful. Jazz, funk, pop uh, in Japanese. Uh, actually, pop, soul, pop, funk in Japanese. A, r a really nice collection. These are really fun, upbeat records um, for your collection, and I highly recommend them. Okay, a soul comp. This is great. Afro futuristic electro funk in space, 1976 to 1984. Um, soul jazz records. Soul jazz records. Space funk. Look at that, Paul. If you're watching this, I think did you send me this or did I send or did we talk about this? I don't remember anymore. I think I have memory loss from all this video stuff. But this is fun stuff. This is really, this is a fun record too. So a recommended Mazzy soul funk comp. Uh, favorite reggae comp. I just showed this in my reggae thread. So I'm repeating myself, but it's my all time favorite comp. From Bam Bam to Cherry, Yo Baby, Trojan Records, probably 1973 or four ish. It has um, Desmond Decker, Toots and the Maytals, Hopeton Lewis um, and Eric Donaldson. What a great feel, great record. A song that we used to play in a record store all the time and sell tons of this. I have no idea if it's still available. This is an English pressing, from original English pressing from the early 70s. But a great, great, just a funky, great reggae comp. All right, uh, a punk club comp. I'm showing something that's close to home in terms of me being in San Francisco. Uh, 415 Music. And this is 415 Music. That was a label started by Howie Klein and Chris Nab. Uh, Chris Nab had a record store in San Francisco. He's the star. He started out a record store called Aquarius Records that was around for decades, literally. He didn't own it the whole time. Howie Klein started 415 Records and put out a lot of great artists. Uh, later, he would go on. Hit 415 got picked up. His uh, label got picked up by Columbia. He had uh, put out Romeo Void records, uh, Translator records, uh, some other records got picked up by Columbia, and they put out some of those records as well, like the Romeo Void. 
but he also uh, ended up becoming the president of Sire Records, the Seymour Stein label. But this was an early comp put out uh, in collaboration with some of the DJs at KSAN Radio, some of the edgier DJs that started, you know, KSAN came out of the ru ruins of KMPX in the late 70s and was a station that was into psychedelic and long cuts and, you know, the album tracks. And they took a little bit of, of pushing to get into the whole punk scene, the new wave scene, but they finally did. But uh, uh, DJs like uh, uh, Richard Gossett and Beverly Wilshire would get on board. Sean Donahue, Tony Kilbert, Glenn Lambert, Bonnie Simmons would get involved in this record. And for, this is a great comp. It has the Ready Maids, Times Five, The Mutants, 391, Sudden Fun, The Donuts, SVT, The Symptoms, uh, VIP, Joe Allen and The Shapes, and The Offs. All of these bands I saw live around the time playing in, uh, in the punk clubs, new wave clubs. So it's a crossover from new wave, power pop, and punk. But uh, this was a fun uh, record that came out independently. 415 Records. Very local to me and uh, kind of a fun comp if you see it around. I don't know how you would see it, but a lot of these you know, were indie bands. All these bands were putting out records themselves. So that was kind of a nice... Uh, packaging of that at the time. All right. Um, show a punk, excuse me, show a comp featuring cover songs. Well, I got to show Beatle Connection. And this is a fantastic, there's CD variations of this, but this is the songs Lennon and McCartney gave away. And these songs are fantastic. Most of these songs are songs that uh, Lennon and McCartney wrote, but didn't record, the Beatles didn't record with some exceptions. Obviously, it starts out with I'm the Greatest uh, from Ringo's Ringo album in 1973 that John Lennon wrote and gave for Ringo. One and one is two, the, the, Strang, the Strangers with Mike Shannon from a window, Billy J. Kramer and the Dakotas, Peter and Gordon's Nobody I Know, Like Dreamers Do by the Apple Jacks, I'll Keep You Satisfied, Billy J. Kramer, Love of the Love, Sell a Black, Woman, great song, Peter and Gordon, a, had a big hit with that was written by Bernard Webb and that was uh, Paul McCartney writing under a different name because he wanted to test out if a song would be a hit even if it wasn't listed as a Lennon and McCartney song and of course Woman was a huge hit. Tip of my tongue, Tommy Quickly, I'm in love foremost. Uh, PJ Pro Proby is on here, um, Marcilla Black, World Without Love, one of the great songs that the Beatles didn't record that Peter and Gordon had a huge hit with Bad to Me, Billy J. Kramer. I mean, amongst others. If you can find a copy of this, I highly recommend it. It's really, it's a lot of songs. It's like 20 songs, but they're really short, tightly, beautiful, mercy type, mercy beat type pop songs. Highly recommend it, great. Uh, your favorite album cover. Now I did show two comps earlier and I called out the Titans album and one of the other, um, album covers that I really love. And this is amongst my favorite. I mean, I love all the album covers that uh, the Flaming Lips do. And this is their Greatest Hits Volume 1. So that's a comp, right? Greatest Hits. Their stuff is so sort of digitally psychedelic. And I just love uh, the look of these records. Is this a colored one? No, it's black. So that wouldn't fit in. But, you know, look at that. Look at that inner sleeve, even though it came with a beautiful poly line inner sleeve they give you a psychedelic inner sleeve as a bonus too so the great flaming lips artsy art rock psychedelic uh, cool stuff and of course the hit do you realize do you realize all right show a greatest hits comp the biggest selling album between 2000 and 2009, that decade. <coughs> I'm just cho choked up. The Beatles won. Theoretically, every number one Beatles song with a cup with a exception or two left off for timing on that because what they really wanted to do is put a single CD out that had all the Beatles hit. So obviously CD holds 80 minutes, I believe. And they had to leave off 
I forgot right now, but you're gonna yell it out and put it here. I know it, so you don't even have to bother. But um, the vinyl was rare at the time because vinyl wasn't a thing in the 2000s, or it wasn't a big thing, and obviously cramming all the stuff in this double record. It has been uh, remastered uh, and remix versions came out eventually, but um, this CD was in every Walmart, every Target, every grocery store, everywhere. This, again, the biggest selling album of the 2000s. A friggin' comp by the Beatles. One, Beatles one. All right, um, show a indie alternative comp. Well, I'm going back in time just because going into that whole Mercy Beat thing. I don't know, this, this, they didn't call this shit indie at the time, but um, instead of ha having all these indie things now, I'm going way back. Although this was released in the 70s, but all these songs, this is a fantastic collection. And this is Mercy Beat 45, 1962 to 1964. So, you know, indie in a way, right? This is uh, Ferrans Flamingos, The Mercy Beats, The Searchers, The Big Three, Sonny Webb and the Cascades, The Undertakers, King Size Taylor and the Dominoes, Lee Curtis, let's see, The Denisons, The Shakers, The Mojos, Rory Storm and the Hurricane. You might have heard that because that was the band Ringo uh, Starr came from. These were a lot of singles that are very forgotten that never, a lot of them didn't make, them, make over here in the, in the States. So I considered these sort of indie independent in a way. They were bubbling under. They were regional type uh, in some cases. Most of these bands were the bands that were playing at the Cavern Club during the uh, the Beatles heyday. What's great, what's amazing about this comp, look at this, this is a 70s comp, an import. I just love, love the design of this. Wonderful, wonderful record. And it comes with a replica of the Mercy Beat uh, newspaper that was all over uh, Merseyside during the days of the Beatles, Cavern Days, early 1960, 61, 62. And um, this is from, I don't know what year this is from, but I just love this stuff. Bill Harry uh, was the publisher, editor of Mercy Beat, and uh, has put out a, several books on the time and subject. So, great, great comp. I don't know if you can find that. It's around, I'm sure, somewhere. Okay, show a comp that you got on a record store day. Here's one, Poppy's, Poppy's Assorted Finery from the First Psychedelic Age. A lot of loose singles, uh, that were never really big, like there's Buffy St. Marie, Southwest FOB, Jefferson Lee, The Gospel, The Frost, The Saltweed Factor, Circus Maximus. It's probably one of the few I knew. The Honey Jug. Kind of power pop psychedelic. Not power pop, but, but sunshine psychedelic in a way and folksy stuff. Um, another beautiful cover, right? Oh, here we go. Color. Color alert. Record store day. That's when you buy all the stuff that you don't really need <laughs> and it sits on your shelf. Okay. Um, show a comp from your region in the world. Well, I was born in San Francisco, grew up in San Francisco, and I'm going to show these two comps because when I was a kid, before the whole FM scene, or an overlapping, I guess, with the FM scene, but KYA and KFRC were the top 40 radio stations. And these kind of comps I'm showing probably came out in so many different regional markets. A lot of times these were, these were I know KRLA and LA did them. And I'm sure where you live around the uh, country, you got versions of this exactly the same with your call letters from your radio station. A lot of garage rock, a lot of top 40 stuff. And what's great about these, and I got these at the time, you know, you buy them because your radio station would promote them. I can't remember if you bought them in stores or you sent away for them. I don't remember now. Golden Gate Greats, obviously, because Golden Gate San Francisco, 21 Golden Gate Greats KYA. This is like 65, 66-ish, both of these. And what's great about these 
look at all the variety of music that was around. Or look at, just look at this one. Okay. Along Comes Mary, The Association, Western Union, Five Americans, I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry, B.J. Thomas, Summer of the City, uh, Love and Spoonful, one of the great summer songs of all time, Cherry Cherry, Neil Diamond, I Fought the Law and the Law Won, Bobby Fuller, Get On Up, The Esquires, Working in a Coal Mine, Lee Dorsey, The Boy from New York City, The Ad Libs, La Bamba, Richie Valens, The McCoys, Hang on Sloopy, Blues theme, Dave Arrow, that great fuzz psychedelic guitar. Hang on Sloopy, I said that. Hanky Panky, Tommy James and the Shondells. Psychotic Reaction, the Count Five. Garage Rock at its finest. Talk Talk Music Machine. Lies, Knickerbocker. Knickerbockers, Chapel of Lug, Dixie Club. Cup, yeah. Dixie Cups. And of course on this one, The Fever Tree, uh, San Francisco Girls. Hold Me Tight, Johnny Nash, You Baby, The Turtles, Hold On, I'm Coming by Sam and Dave. Soul music was everywhere. Brown Eyed Girl, Great Summer Song by Van Morrison, Pushing Too Hard, The Seeds, on and on and on. Da -da 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 -da. Sit Down, I Think I Love You, uh, The Mojo Man, of course, Buffalo Springfield had the original of that. A Daydream, Love and Spoonful, A Summer Song, Chad and Jeremy, I Had Too Much to Dream Last Night, The Electric Croons. This was when AM radio was so great. Back in my day, I could hear all this variety of music on AM radio, and I loved it. So, And lastly, show your favorite comp and explain why. I mean, there's so many. This comp's a box set, four LPs. I go back to this a lot because it's four LPs, but because I love this music. This is Electric Muse, the story of folk into rock, various artists, volumes one to four. This is an overview, a beautiful overview of British folk rock, folk and rock, which has, and some American influences too, like Jack Elliott, but it's got Steel Eye Span, it's got um, Ian Campbell, the Dublin Airs, the Chieftains, Fairport Convention, Hedgehog Pie, John Martin, John and Beverly Martin, uh, Mr. Fox, Fairport Convention, again, Lindisfarne, Jack the Lad, Richard Thompson, obviously from Fairport. Um, let's see, Bert Jansch, Shirley Collins and David Graham. Oh, love them. Uh, Martin Carthay, Carthy, uh, Traffic, John Barleycorn Must Die. Because they were, even though they went to the psychedelic thing, Traffic really came out of that whole folk rock thing, at least especially on the album John Barleycorn Must Die. Steel Eye Span, Ralph McTell, John Renborn. Davy Graham, Pentangle again, Al Stewart, Fairport Convention. Four LPs, beautiful box set. Um, highly recommended. I know there's a CD version I have. It's got a lovely overview talking about the history of this music. So that's enough for now, right? I went on a oh, half hour. Nick, click below to his comps. No more threads. Please, Mazzy loves you.